Um, all righty. Well, welcome, you guys. Uh, this is D&D, how to be, a, you know, like D&D and me, how to yeah. be a good uh, DM and role player. Yeah. In other words, too. Yes. It's great. <laughs> all right. And so my name is Tyler. I'm from the Grand Geek Gathering. Uh, we do podcasts and panels and other stuff and more. But this is not my panel. This is, a, this is a panel for these amazing, very, very talented people. And they asked me to do this, and I feel sorry for them. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of Vicious Mockery? No. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. Can I try that again? Yeah, yeah, have you guys heard it. of Vicious Mockery? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Thank I'll take it. Lying. There's like it's, four it's, of them. It's, it's Sunday. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we have some amazing people on here. We have Steve Caceres. Yeah. We have Artie Mora. Jordan Munn. Hello. We also have Paula CK. Where are we going with? <laughs> Paula. And uh, Mark Kerr. Yeah. DM Marker. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Um, and uh, what, what do you guys do? What is Vicious Mockery? And uh, uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll start off. So, so I'm Marker. Uh, people online know me as DM Marker because uh, there is a YouTube show called Vicious Mockery, which I am the writer, dungeon master, villain, main character, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and it's on YouTube. It's, we have 100 episodes. It's really great. If you, don't, if you aren't liking and subscribing us yet, please do that. Um, and uh, it, it, it's really cool. And I've been dungeon mastering for a, for a long, long time, Tyler. That's and good. A real long time, like 10 years now. 10, 10 years? And, um, That's a decade. Yeah. Amateur. And uh, I've taught other people how to do it. And I brought my wife into it. <laughs> so you're an enabler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Complete enabler. Hi. So I'm Paula CK. Uh, I'll give my full name so they know what my acting name is. So my name is Paula yeah. Carbohol Kerr. So yes, I am married to this dork. Um, <laughs> I am into D and D. He actually got me into it uh, as long as I a few of my other friends. Um, this is so awkward. I'm like. I, I know, right? I want to give you love, and I want to give you love. Uh, <laughs> I am actually one of the actresses on the YouTube show for Vicious Mockery, and I play a Odie, and I have little stickers if anybody wants any. Uh, I'm a barred tiefling, blue tiefling to be exact. Um, but yeah, and I have a mouse named Tone, he's my companion. And I make a lot of Vicious Mockery jokes through Simpson quotes. Yeah. Hell yeah, and I enable those quotes yes, too. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, Your mic is so tall. <laughs> Is. Just like perfect your hat. For me. Yes. Oh, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Jordan Munn, and I play Althea on the show, who's an Eladrin sorceress uh, with the dragon soul and all of that D&D stuff. Um, but my real love is Margaret Scratcher, who yeah. I hope I'll bring on the show soon enough. Yeah, yeah. You have to <laughs> say what Margaret Scratcher is. Oh, she's a tabaxi wizard lady. Yeah. <laughs> She's insane, yes. D&D. &D. I guess we're going, we're going down the line, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Steve Caceres. I have nothing to do with uh, vicious mockery at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually... I'm a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just Get out. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, what are you on this panel for? Uh, no, I'm friends with uh, Mark, Paola, and Jordan. Uh, we met together at the Comic Bug. Uh, I've been a dungeon master for about 35 years. That's it? Oh, that's a long time. Also, um, I have done a comic book that is kind of an homage to the classic D&D &D monster manual known as the Cryptonomicon, where we make fun of all the horrible people in the world and make them D&D &D monsters. So that we, that, we, that we can bash them easier with our dice. So that's kind of why I'm here. So. Hello, my name is Artie. Um, I'm a naval officer. So oh, I've been DMing Artie. for about 22 years, not as much as 35, but a little more than 10 and such. I'm just uh, old. <laughs> I've been an enabler of Dungeons & Dragons for many of the stores, including the ones where I met Mark and Paola uh, over in Manhattan Beach, as well as all the way from Monrovia. I am a local coordinator for organized public play of Dungeons & Dragons. And again, I've been uh, doing this in addition to teaching kids, all the way up to adults, parents together, and various individuals that need that extra oomph to tell, uh, for storytelling. All righty. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here. <laughs> Yeah, and um, since this is kind of a more interactive panel, I'm going to have you guys uh, ask questions, you know, as we go along. But uh, and of course, for you to ask questions, I don't know if you knew this, but we're going to have a fight to the death. So this side versus this side. Right. Good luck. I'm Ooh, just kidding. There's more people on this <laughs> side. <laughs> Underdogs. Yeah. yeah it, That's true. <laughs> and and you know. <laughs> yeah, legit. And, and, and people don't know this, but David F. Pumpkins is, S. S. Pumpkins is, is a Highlander. He is immortal. <laughs> he has inside him blood of kings. He has no rival. No man can make his. Does he also have a... Uh, That's too old of a reference. That, that is super old. It's too old for me. I got it. I'm the old guy here. <laughs> yeah. 
That's he true. can't. Yeah, he can't. He is the only one. Already, already, so <laughs> <laughs> divergent conversation. We just talked about this. I've never seen that film. Alrighty. Oh, what? So you guys, the panelists, what are the advantages of tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons versus other mediums like video games or reading books or comics like nerds do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, me? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah you're, 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 <laughs> like, like, why would you do it? You're, you're like our senpai right now. <laughs> okay. I'm going to look to Steve. All right. Okay. Well, uh, for me, the advantage is that it's a way to form community. Um, it is uh, one of the, it, actually what role playing really is, is the oldest uh, art form in the world, which is storytelling. Uh, when humanity was around the fire, uh, campfires at night, they were not just telling stories, they became the stories. We have imagery of people becoming Raven, becoming the sun, becoming the moon, and role playing out these parts. So that's what we're doing at the table when we're uh, younger. We're reenacting re 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 this oral tradition. Um, it's one of the like, oldest art forms, but it's also very social. Um, people think, oh, a bunch of nerds in a basement not getting along with them. No, no, they're learning how to interact with people and deal with issues and problems that, in a, a safe way that most people are, have a, actually a difficult time doing in real life. It allows yeah. them to get past that point. So I, I think it's a, a wonderful way of, um, it's, it's a wonderful, ball of social dynamics that we can utilize to uh, expand ourselves in, in a, better than other art forms like video games, which can be kind of isolating at times. Yeah. Oh, you, me? You yeah? No, he goes. Oh. No, I have one right here. The okay. other aspect, too, is uh, where most video games and such have very linear formats of that. Tabletop role-playing, especially when it comes to role-playing games, allow you to go completely off the rails. Introduce new aspects of yourselves you may not even know you have until the dice show up, a uh, complication uh, rises, and you find strength within yourself that you may not have a prior experience with before. Yeah. And also offers a very comfortable space for individuals to try new things uh, that they may not have other access to elsewhere in the world. Hmm. Yeah, I, and, and I, I think, I think uh, we, we live in such an age where uh, it's it's comfortable to be in your own skin now, you know. I think I think with the uh, the proliferation of like the Marvel movies and things like that that have made sort of geek culture elevated. Fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons has made it accessible <laughs> to be a role player and and to be uh, a person who uh, likes to write these. Uh, social stories with a community and uh, fifth edition is just I, I, I can't I can't say I, I love it so much I, I would just be too big of a spokesperson and I really want you know them to pay me more money because they don't pay me anything <laughs> um, <laughs> um, wizards give me money um, and, but 5th edition has made it so that we can have the tools to create these social stories and then said, hey, it's okay if you want to bend the rules. Is your, um, is your human barbarian, are, are, is, there, is their skin blue? Yes. Why? I don't need to tell you why. <laughs> right? And that's okay. Um, you know, a lot of the old school grognards are like, no, humans can only have a, so many shades of color on their skin and the pigment, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? The story's not about pigment and skin, all that stuff. Like, just, just be who you want to be and let's just, let's pretend with dice. Come on, guys. <laughs> roll with us. Yeah, let, let, let's roll, baby. Yeah, um, as they've said several times now, it is very social, but it's also... Uh, if you love to flex your improv yeah. skills, I love improv. I can't get over it. Um, and and like he said, you, you can railroad it however you want. Where video games are not at that point yet, because like in the f in the first Halo, if you shoot Captain Keys in the face when you meet him, which you can do, he will die, and then you cannot continue in the game. But <laughs> if we did it in D and D, it's like okay, now what the heck do we do? Now we have to run for our lives, and the DM can figure it out from there. Yeah. It's yeah. yes and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love the yes party. and of D and D. Yeah. And and the cool part is, is you could also say, you know what, Master Chief is a woman, and 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 that can be in D and D, but in in Halo, no. Oh <laughs> Master Chief has a, ma a male's voice, and you know you have to listen to a male's voice over and over and over. <laughs> you know you you can you can be who you want to be in 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 tabletop, and it's just you know video games are restricted to the medium with which they exist. 
uh, tabletop uh, only exists in, in the medium of our imaginations and it only goes as far as our imaginations can be stretched. That's true. And like with, uh, again, I'll just stick with Halo, like we can keep redoing the same story in a million different ways. Now I want to be the aliens and kill the humans and all of that. Now yeah. I want to be the Flood. But you can't do that. No, not you can't play the game and do that. I actually have another question that I kind of like <laughs> balancing off what you guys are saying because I, I think that video games also have opened up a lot of the role playing aspect of it and wanting people to essentially become a character even more so because again, you are restricted in video games like you said. However, some video games have done a really, really good job not going all the way for it, but at least having, I feel like, being a bridge. How do you feel about Mass Effect or just any Bioware game? Um, minus Andromeda. Um, <laughs> sorry. I uh, know, but uh, how do you feel about these games that are kind of like a nice bridge where you can make some decisions, but it doesn't, doesn't really do anything, doesn't really add to the end? See, what you're missing is the I love social... It. You're, I, I, I lo look, I, I'm, I'm, I love video games. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm, uh, like I love playing video games, but... The, the problem is, is you're missing the social aspect. Yeah. I think us as, as, as human beings here, we, we and, and as human beings who are also geeks, we have the, 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 the poor luck in being social outcasts or those who are socially ostracized. Yeah. And in as much as we, we have a hard time socializing, um, you know, compared to other people who can talk about football and all that stuff, like, with, with tabletop, it offers us the medium and, and the, the appropriateness in the medium to, to be social and, 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 and geeky at the same time. Like, yeah. if, in the, in, like if, if, I'm, uh, if I'm playing like Apex or, or, or Fortnite and like uh, there's like 20 other people on the mic and they're all screaming, it's like I'm not going, how's your day? <laughs> you know, like it, it doesn't promote like healthy conversation and, and, and friendly atmosphere as much. And there, yeah. there are video games that do promote friendly atmosphere. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But tabletop is all about that. Like yeah. I, we cannot progress unless we are united as, as a team. Yeah. Like, like in Fortnite, it's all for one. Like, like it's all about like talking trash to the other people <laughs> on the mic. Yeah. Like, with this, it's like no. This is my team. If I if I if I decide to 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 go off and do my own thing, RT is going to murder me, yeah. because he's expecting me to like heal him when he runs into battle and kills himself because that's what barbarians do. Absolutely. Yeah. And I need to understand him as a social being. You know, I have to have an understanding of someone else. And I, a tabletop. It does that. Like other games, I don't care what your character build is. Screw you. I'm an awesome character. I'm gonna go and shoot Commander Shepard in the face. I don't care. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's re it's really hard to uh, trash talk to somebody who's two feet away from you. Yeah. And can then throw the open soda can in your face if you piss them off. <laughs> so in hot pockets. I, so a lot of the social decorum that is required in face to face contact is there in the game. You can very well be enemies and rivals and have this long standing rival that last, you know, months in the game, but you're still but you still have to then like, you know, order pizza together and make sure you share money. So that that social interaction right there, having them right in front of you, because like other online games, there's anonymity. You pick your name, you pick what your character looks like, you know, you're on a chat a chat channel. You have no idea who these people are and thus you don't care. Yeah. But if you have to show up every single Friday and and develop a relationship with these people because you have to Set up times. You, you know who's buying the pizza. You know, did you bring the mi miniatures this time? All of those normal social. Those are, those are responsibilities. And if you follow through on that, well, that's fall on you. If you you sign up on to Fortnite and you don't play, it's like okay, who can't, no one really cares. You, you get replaced by somebody else. But when you're part of a team like that, if you don't show up, that has a detrimental effect on everybody else. So it, it, it engenders responsibility to the people on the table. So. Yeah. Um, I think like one of the things about is like that's scary for a lot of people is coming up with the story. Is there anybody here who's interested in becoming a DM possibly for the first time? Yay. Yay. Good job. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing like, you know, a lot of people, I'm guessing you don't work, you know, writing for like, you know, television, film, video games or anything like that. So sometimes it's kind of scary. Like how do I create something that's so interesting and something that I can create a tree for, you know, for these people playing? What do you guys suggest for people who want to become DMs onto how to create an awesome journey? So 
There is a slightly unspoken rule amongst all DMs that none of them will ever confirm this is ever true. The idea is that we have lived our entire lives um, bombarded by social, movies, video games, TV, radio, and stuff like that. The idea is that we are vessels where we can take all the stuff we have taken in, all our favorite stories, all our favorite story um, books and such, shake them up, and come up with something brand new. So occasionally we hear DMs say, every so often, in the quietest of terms, uh, emptiest of rooms, steal from everything, you just don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's that, but you don't also have to break your back coming up with an original story and all these rules. There are existing uh, modules and all of that that are super fun, and depending on your style, you can find what works for you and your friends. Do you guys want to just kill everything? Do you want to have a bunch of riddles? Do you want to role play a lot? And battles don't matter so much. It's, you know, starting with the module is a really good idea. Yeah. Um. DMing is like any other art form. Um, the first time you're going to do it, you're going to suck. It's just that simple. But you have to get past that. Uh, again, it, it, but as a DM, the first part of it is actually the writing aspect of it. Yeah. So as a writer, you sit down and write down what you want to have happen, or you'd like to have happen, because trust me, it's probably not going to go that way, or as well as you think it's going to do. So what I would recommend here, a first time DM, write something you absolutely love, and rip it off. If you love Star Wars, rip off Star Wars. If you like Star Trek, rip off Star Trek. Because if you love it, you know it in, in, intimately, you're gonna write a better story because you know that content better than anybody else. And that'll be your first, like, it's, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. You imitate something first, and that's where the innovation starts. Because when you go for the first game the first time you've done something, you begin to see like, oh, I could have done that differently. Well, guess what? Take notes on that, because that's the next time you do something, that's how you improve as a DM. Um, like, I, 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 like, I like the idea of uh, the KISS theory. Not KISS the oh. band, but... but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are you going, sell out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do anything you can to become a rock star. Um, we're all the paint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, LARPing. Uh, yeah, LARPing, yeah. Um, no, keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. C-I-S-S? -S? Yeah. Kiss. Um, K. What? K-I-S-S. -S. Keep. keep it simple. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to practice their kiss. Oh, man. It's Sunday. <laughs> Writing. Um, <laughs> Happy Sunday, everybody. This is mockery. Um, <laughs> so, so keep it simple, stupid. Um, I, I learned that in an acting class, and I just kept it with me forever. And when I write for to uh, like to make a scenario for that my players will play, I literally only have like maybe five to ten bullet points, and that's how I start. And then I have like five to ten monsters I might want them to fight. And um, if they're going into like a haunted hotel, I'll have a couple of the floors drawn out. Now maybe I'll have a trap or two. But maybe I won't. Maybe, uh, maybe, I, maybe I'll have a couple things pre-designed. And I'll tell you, 90% of the time, the players will not go in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you get to understand like, how trolly your friends are. <laughs> yeah. And, and a lot of times, if they go, you know what? We're not going to go towards a haunted house. Oh, they don't oh. have to be trolly. They could be just literally like, I have no idea what <laughs> Yeah. And that means because they're because they don't know what all the options are, they pick the best one or the one you didn't even think of. Right. There's four of them on the four to six of them on the opposite side, and that's four to six brains yeah. that are looking at your concept, and you only have one brain. They're going to see things you've never contemplated. Yeah. That's that's the fun part of the DM. It's like oh crap. It's like that? donkey in track, like with the sets were so beautiful <laughs> and like everything when they developed the forest. But he's like, I like that boulder. That boulder. That's a nice boulder. Yeah. I'm gonna go look at that boulder. Yeah. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and and if you put a puppy in a tavern, it's a puppy, not the tavern. They're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna go. It, there's a puppy. There's a tavern. Who's more important? The puppy, <laughs> right? And and so now you have to make a story around a puppy. And literally, just throw out those bullet points. Now it's the puppy's journey. And you know what? <laughs> your players will actually enjoy that a lot more. Yeah. And so it's, <laughs> it's, it's knowing your friends a little bit and knowing the stories that, that, that your friends will be cool with 
and then being okay with letting go. I think that's the hardest thing for me as a DM is like, yeah, but I have this crazy scenario about the socioeconomic issue that our players, that, that you are going through right now. And they're like, no, but I don't care about all that crazy 1% detail stuff. I can't fight late stage capitalism. <laughs> but I can pet this puppy. Yeah. <laughs> or they circumvent a situation you thought would take at least an hour and they do it in two seconds. Yeah. The riddles. And yeah. You guys the make riddles. it seem like, like everybody is like a cat. Like you understand the cat, but you'll spend $200 on a tree and it's like, ooh, nice box. And like, it just goes yeah. over to <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to assume everything is gonna be like the cat with the tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The box is more of the toy, right? So like, just, just be okay with, with throwing everything away. And sometimes the best way to start DMing is to not <laughs> read anything. Like pick, buy a module and, and don't even open it until you sit down with your friends. Like I've done that before where, you, where, where I'm like, okay, so I, I haven't read this chapter at all, guys. I'm going to literally read while we play. And a lot of times I just make it up. <laughs> And, and I'll go, oh, okay, so this room has a fireplace in it and the fireplace explodes. Okay, cool. And then I just pretend. So the fireplace is green and when it explodes, it, it explodes into a dragon's face and the dragon face says, I am Beelzebarf and I have an angry face and I'm angry at you. And yeah, I just made up a voice right now. I was like, yeah. that's a funny voice, I'm gonna do it. I wanna make the audience laugh. <laughs> and like, that's the way I view my, Peeps. I'm like, okay, so what's going to make them laugh? What's going to make them interesting or interested? And maybe that dragon is an important character. I don't know. It depends on how interesting, interested they are in that character. Absolutely. Yeah. All righty. Well, I want to open up because I'm sure you guys have questions. Does anybody have a question? Oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> hey. Beelzevar, the angry, ugly dragon. Can we just call him Jerry? I think it'd be funnier. Yep, Jerry. My, People like me do. Um, well, what's funny is I, I have a, um, I have a, a, a Facebook uh, messenger group with all my vicious mockery players on it. And I will make up a character <laughs> at the table and I'll go, what was his name? Wait, I knew he was important. He was a, this guy at this place, he was very important. And I can't find him in my notes anywhere. It's because I just made him up. And uh, my players will remind me because they remember more about this, this guy than I do because he was more important to them than he was to me. And that's okay because as soon as they remind me who he was, they're going to tell me stuff that I don't even remember that happened because the player, the, 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 the moment just kind of took over and like I don't remember everything and that's okay because they do there's four brains like Steven said there's four brains remembering what one this one brain cannot and 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 that's I find that charming um because they're they're going to infer things to the to the character you do yeah. have a cheat though that you, your show is being recorded so you, yeah. you go back yeah I usually ask them what episode it's on <laughs> and then I go and watch it also, the uh, director taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> and that Wikipedia page, the red. Yeah. Um, okay, so if did you, you have anything else? You don't have a studio to back up your role playing. <laughs> um, sometimes you do take notes. Sometimes, sometimes the characters make a, uh, the players you're with make a better idea than you had initially. So that's when you would take a note. But if it's a throwaway thing, like you just want to get them past the situation, you're like, okay, sure, this name's Jim, whatever. Okay, that's fine. But if it's like, wow, this is a much better idea than you take notes. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. fact, one trick, have your players recant the story from last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will give you details you might have missed or things that they remember mm. differently than you do. Mm -hmm. And then you can reward them with inspiration if it was a good review. Yeah. <laughs> so on uh, Wednesdays I do, I'm really sorry, uh, Wednesdays I do D&D uh, &D with uh, little kids at the Comic Bug in Manhattan Beach. And um, like they're usually middle schoolers and elementary schoolers. What I do is, okay, I go, okay, who can in two minutes tell me what happened last week? 
and um, they get all excited. I, I can, I can, I can. They love doing that because I do not remember what happened at all. <laughs> I don't remember what page I was on or anything like that. Oh, we have a question over here, sir. Oh. Uh, yeah. I see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did you have more to say? I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. no. There's another one that we saw, so it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, definitely the whole gap in the most certainly applies to, I would say, children. Yeah. <laughs> no, adults are worse than children. <laughs> Not to point fingers or anything. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. The the second thing is, uh, would you say that being a DM is more along the lines of improv? I think it depends on your style. It's either you research and do a bunch and you know everything inside and out and you just recite it, or you make it up on the fly, or you don't remember and you're like, ah, this sounds right, so here it is. I kind of have to go against that because I'm young, most people here are actually have a theater background. I don't. Um, oh, you too? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I don't know you. So. <laughs> we just met. We just met. Okay. I like you already. All right. So, um, because I'm a writer, I like taking tons of notes before I go in hand. And oftentimes, I'm, I'm over prepared. I have things that the characters will never explore. But that's okay, I'll just recycle them later on for other games. But um, the improv, I, I love the improvisation. I'm, I, I, when I first started playing it when I was younger, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> but as I got older, I just realized, oh, this is just part of the learning process. That, so just in case any, any future DMs out there were worried that it's all improvisation, no, you could, there's a lot of planning there involved, and oftentimes your planning can actually save you as well. So don't worry about too much with the improv, and if you uh, are kind of nerd about it, you will learn how to utilize that. So. I, I have a buddy who's a big maps guy and literally everything is all about maps for him. <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm the complete opposite. And he, he, my, his friends tell me his games are perfect. And I'm like I don't know how but I think there's a lot of people that have different styles. And you just need to figure out what style works for you and just go with it. Um, to, to bounce off of that, do you think it's about uh, you or you and the players as well? Actually, it comes out, it, based on the dynamics of the party and the DMs, you will have different games, not just with different friends, different days and stuff like that. Sometimes you can have the same uh, queue of people kind of show up for a table and have a completely different experience than the week prior. Oh, okay. It's yeah. all based on how people have gone through the week and such, and that's one thing we've actually, at least I have noticed over the years, that sometimes people come to the table and job sucks day's been bad, uh, cats won't stop crying out in the alleys and stuff like that. And they just have a place and need a place to actually kind of relax, let go some of the frustration and vent out and such. Other weeks, everything is the best. They just want a lotto, they got a free muffin at work and such, and they just can't see, stop seeing rainbows the entire day, which is great for them. But then again, try and contrast with some people at the table, going through different moods, different days and such. It is a cooperative game at its heart, and a result of which uh, people bring in different things from outside the game that sometimes you have to contend with, sometimes you have to enjoy. I've had people who are like maps guys and just love everything strategic about the game. Other days they're just like, eh, let's just wing it for today. And as shocking as that is, we're like, no, nope, okay, yeah, no map, ha! And then move on from there. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So, as a DM, one of the struggles I had was one of my favorite ones. And he was also a new player. Yeah. <laughs> That depends on what he intends to do with an evil character. Then no. <laughs> because No, because that makes it a hard time for everybody else in the game. If, an evil person with a vendetta, an evil person with a goal in mind can work with good people, okay? A newbie can't do that. I can't stress it enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it also, some people have ethical issues with... Because the game in general is about heroes going out in a grand adventure. If Bilbo was evil and went, no, this ring is mine, end of story. There is no story. So if there, I mean, there are 
aspect, there are in the, in the D&D history, that there are games that are strictly evil, where you are playing evil characters. It is the Quentin Tarantino Reservoir Dog situations. Yeah. If he yeah. wants to play that game, he, ha he has to make sure everybody else at that table wants to do the same thing. If he's the only lone gun, then he's breaking the group, and that's not, that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. I would be Absolutely. very careful with the neutral. Hey. <laughs> I, I have, Chaotic good's the best. I have, I have two rules with the little kids. Um, Only two? Only two. It starts with two. It starts with two. It starts with two. Um, rule of cool. If it sounds cool, let's, let's make it happen. Right? You want a tornado strike, cut everything? Okay, and then I'll just make up rules to make that happen. Because that sounds cool. The second rule, it, it, it basically cannot defy the first. It's you can't ruin somebody else's fun. And so like that. If, if, if somebody comes to the table and they go, I want to kill this player, then I defer to that player. Would you like to die? <laughs> <laughs> and because they, they have a right to be on the table just as much as you, you do. And so, so instead of creating that conflict, what I'll do is I'll go, I'll go, okay, so, so how can we as, as friends now, not inside the game, but how can we as friends like establish a way for you to have your fun and you to have your fun at the same time? Yeah. On the side as a, as a player who likes a lot of chaotic characters, what I would actually say is if you, he says openly or they say openly that they, they want to murder things, because you have a DM and you have the rest of the party, you can actually come up with rules or consequences behind it, like up front, like, okay, you can do this, but this is what will happen if you do this piece. And I think as long as you can say you can do things, but within the confines of the rules, you have a bit more control of that chaos. So it still allows him to have more fun, still follow the fun for everybody else, but there's a consequence to his character for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm Reddit has good ideas on joking. that, on punishing evil doing. <laughs> <laughs> One of my kids who has started playing D&D about seven years ago, uh, I should know nine years ago, because now he's 21 now. I have him running for some of the kids. Over the last couple, almost decade and such, he's been wanting to play evil characters. So we've been giving outlets or so how to practice like lawful evil, uh, chaotic evil, neutral evil, and stuff like that in controlled environments with adults as well. I have him running for some of the kids at our local store. He decided to make a campaign where some of the eldest kids who also want to play evil characters, he wanted to do it appropriately. He made a mobster to run them through mobster-like activity to show them the consequences of what it is to be on the side of evil, to actually have the watch and everybody else constantly hunting and after them, and more importantly, what it is to actually face and deal with true evil and how much more villainous it really is. Ooh. And some of the kids are uh, liking it, and they're like, yeah, some of us, we don't like that very much. Other yeah. kids, they love it. They want more <laughs> of it. They wish other, other games were like that. But then they're at least getting an exposure to know what they can do in a evil campaign versus what they can do in a non-evil campaign. Absolutely. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. man. No, those, both those hands. I don't know who was first. I'm going to go with you. <laughs> there is no plan for the length of a campaign. I only do epic sweeps. <laughs> no, there's different types. Uh, you can have one shots, or you can mm -hmm. do what I do and have a three-year game. Mm -hmm. It's like a manga. Once one arc ends, you do the next thing, which is usually mm -hmm. a school tournament and then a circus, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jordan, so much. Um, I mean, but it really is in arcs. It, if yeah, you think about yeah. it, so before we started doing the show, we used to do a lot of Pathfinder games, which I liked Pathfinder for its features, hated all the math. Um, but a lot of it had to do, you would do, you only have so much time, right? And so the idea is that you, you can't always meet, and then we have like unfinished games. Some of the, my friends that I've, are here that I have not finished games with. Hmm. Um, but it really just, you, if you do it in senses of arcs, like, you know this group of friends, you know, you're, you don't expect anything to happen with between you guys, that you'll still be friends for another however long. So you anticipate, okay, let's do one arc. And then you just kind of keep going from there. It's very different if you are trying to do something more episodic like we do with the show, or if you're like literally, like Steve who plans out everything, he's like, no, this is probably gonna take X many of years. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been lucky amongst gamers that I had a gaming group for 20 years. Mm -hmm. That, we, wow. that, that met weekly. 
What? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Every adult in the room. I had that a rare. I had, <laughs> unbelievable. I, I, from college until about like 2012, we basically met every single Friday, and we've gotten through whole camp. We're talking Iliad level type stuff. Wow. Several times with different in different campaign worlds. So I've been very lucky in that regard that I've ha we had the two three years to get through a whole story. We also had plenty of one shots, plenty of like, oh, there's only three of us. Okay, we'll get started, and we'll play like three weeks. I go. Oh, the other two guys are back again. Okay, and that story completely disappears into the mess. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, like I, said, I was very lucky in that regard. So. We don't have that much time left, so I'm, we're going to go ahead and go to the next question. <laughs> if that's okay, I'm that's so sorry. Oh, did you have no. something to say, Artie? I'm so sorry. Otherwise, the short of it, uh, plan, for, uh, plan for the best, but also expect the worst. People drop in all the time out of the games, life happens, and just have fun. That's all you can, really can plan for. Yeah. So sorry, Artie. Artie? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, could we, could, Sorry. Uh, RT, uh, could you pull the really? mic towards yeah. you? Ah, there you go. Then I'll swallow the mic. Uh, <laughs> again, always, um, what was it? Expect, oh, what was it? Yes, that. It, friends come in, they go, they drop in, things happen, they make a off to other gaming groups and such. The idea is as long as you're planning to have fun, uh, that's all your campaigns can ever be. Okay, and this will be our last question. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> Not in reality. <laughs> how, how would I base a story about that one time that you blew up a tavern in my game? <laughs> I hate you, Mike. <laughs> I, well, well, I mean, like, so, 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 like, that, that kind of, like, I invoke my rule of cool versus, like, the, the second rule, like, you can't ruin other people's fun. Because for me, like, as a DM, I'm like, I haven't really, like, thought of that scenario, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, I want to invoke my second rule. But at the, there's another piece of me that goes, why, why are you ruining my story? Like, 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 now I have to change the story a little bit. But what I would do is, is go, oh, okay, so um, the villain that you were going to fight in the dungeon if you went to the end he's going to come out and he's going to be like hey why are you burning my tavern down now he owns a tavern <laughs> <laughs> and now you're going to fight him in the middle of the street as opposed to in his dungeon <laughs> um you know just like like for me i'm an improv guy so that that's that would be my scenario i think i i think um being adaptable and being okay with just getting rid of a lot of the big grandiose story that you've built already is kind of part of my forte. But I, I don't know how like a maps guy would do it. Yeah, but you don't have to punish yeah. them if they had like a good reason for it. But I also love the funniest, weirdest outcome, so it's yeah. very dependent on the situation. <laughs> Y'all have anything else to add? Not for that question. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, usually it's the one complications that arise in the stories that people tend to remember more often than not. Right. Very rarely do you hear gamers of any sort of so talk about, and then I rolled nothing but crits the entire time. It was a grand time. The dragon and the terrasque, they both were slown within uh, two turns, and then we live happily after. It's always the things that may not work perfectly well that day that we tend to remember, and we yeah. tell stories, and how we overcome those complications. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Alrighty, um, so we focus a lot on, on DMing today, so I'm gonna, I have two last questions. I was going to ask you guys to just go down the line and then, uh, then yeah, we'll. Um, so what, what is the thing that you kind of go, how do you prepare to create a character, one? And, um, and also, what is the hardest thing about having a D&D &D game consistent? Like, like, basically, like, what is the hardest thing about having an ongoing game? So I have those two questions, and then we'll do the roundup. I'm going to answer the, the, the character one. So a okay. lot of it for me is if I'm going to have fun. Um, you are committing a lot of the time to this game, right? So if someone wants to run a, a full arc, it's at least a few months, depending on how often you meet. And so you're committing yourself. You have to have fun in what you're doing. And so what I try to do most of the time is, uh, is get characters that I know I will have fun doing mm -hmm. um, that, well, for me personally, I like things that will kind of evolve a bit more as they kind of level up that they'll have more evolution to it instead of like a stagnant character yeah um and then just kind of identifying 
uh, how they'll work with the other characters. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of semi-meta where I always like asking people like, what's your character gonna be? So <laughs> I can try to play off of it as well as like power play off. So if there's too many clerics and there's no fighter, like uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the fighter. Yeah. Um, but it, mo for me, it's mostly the fun pieces. If I'm having fun doing the character, um, I, it, it's what makes me going to those gatherings and doing the, the stuff that I do very, very fun. Okay. And what do you find is the hardest thing about uh, getting your group together? <laughs> oh, man. Consistently. Consistently? Uh, not being an adult. Uh, when you're an adult, you have work and commitments. Um, I think an attachment to the social piece, liking the people you're with. I think after yeah. a certain amount of time, if you don't like the people that you're with or like aren't willing to have those conversations with them when they like bug you or give you issues like you're gonna hate going to these places uh i will be very open that was a, one of the part of one of uh the few the first few times i was unsure about one of our players and i was just like i don't know if i can do this i don't know if i can do this until i finally was like you gotta stop doing this please and they're like okay i was like oh cool fine awesome Absolutely. i can do it but a lot of it is that social piece and like can i stick with these band of crazy people yeah for so long yeah perfect next <coughs> You're okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, oh, whoever wants to get up in. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, what was the first question? Oh, uh, the first question is, um, what do you do to get to essentially create a character? Like, well, what do you what do you look for? What do you want to do? Okay. So, mostly everything Palace said, and um, <laughs> and also I asked myself, what haven't I done yet, mm -hmm. and what would be fun for me? Like Margaret Scratcher is a cat person, and I'm a cat person, and um, she. Uh, she's kooky and crazy and weird whereas Althea was like perfectly like here's the rules of the books of sorcerers and that's what I made and then the tabaxi I wanted to like have fun with it and I wanted her to be good and I originally wanted her to be a necromancer but then I made her the other thing where like you roll the dice twice and it's like no I foresaw that so now that six is an 18 because that's really fun divination uh, divination that's the word I always forget it <laughs> um, yeah so I like to figure out what haven't I done yet as far as characters go, but I might not ever be a monk. I still might play with that, but I'll never be a fighter because I love casting spells. So <laughs> it's just what, what do you enjoy, what works for you, and also I love working with other people. If there's four clerics, that's really boring. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and then the hardest part you find of uh, doing consistent group? Gas prices. Um, um, travels. Yeah. I travel a ways, um, but also, yeah, the, the table dynamic, if you didn't like who you're playing with, that's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't like playing with an evil person at all. I actually hate uh, betraying the people you're with. I'm all about co-op. Yeah. Um, so, that's, that's what that is for me. Okay. Yeah, and the busy schedules. Oh, I hate them. Yeah. Steve? Um, uh, when I'm actually playing, which, which is not that often, I usually want to play somebody from... Uh, a character I've recently read about or seen in a movie that I like and try to re emulate that. Uh, when I'm a DMing, I'm playing dozens of characters. At that point, it's more about archetypes, you know, the Darth yeah. Vader type character or, you know, the love interest and stuff like that. That's what I'm thinking about when I'm making characters. And the hardest part about role playing at this point is the time. I cannot wait to retire <laughs> so I can play three games a week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, three games three. a week that'd be awesome um so uh, uh, just as well i don't get to play very often such i spend more time playing as a dm because i get to play during every turn versus only one sixth of the time the one thing i did used to do back when i was able so i would always think of riddles uh something about this character that they have either as a secret or something they're trying to unravel as well and find ways to uh, kind of incorporate it into the character structure how they're working how they Think, and it would often take me to places where I never thought or considered such, based on what, why this character is existing as an adventurer, got pulled into the adventuring lifestyle, or just has been an adventurer all their life. Um, and I always find it interesting to, to come from that aspect, only because it makes me want to think more and be more invested to make sure the survival of this character is paramount. Versus having a character where you just kind of roll up and something like, oh, hey, there's a dungeon, and with a bottomless pit. That's what the bomb spit is. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to uh, actually trying to figure out what is like the hardest part about in, uh, keeping an ongoing campaign or so, time and commitment is oftentimes one yeah. of the things that always comes up and such, where people are like, oh, it's been a great game, some of that, we're able to do our character arc, and then I found another game. 
or all of a sudden they find a different style of games. Uh, whether it be from Call of Cthulhu, um, mm. Shadowrun, they sometimes will get a little tired and frustrated with having the pre Renaissance lifestyle. And they're like, ooh, can we have guns? Can we have bombs? Can we have explosives? Can we have science? And unfortunately, DD doesn't, as base core, allow for such things. And they want something more. They want something more akin to real life. Yeah. And I oftentimes lose a lot of players based off of that. Absolutely. Hey, Mark? Um, I, I make characters based on like my favorite pop singers sometimes. Oh. <laughs> May I ask, uh, are you a bard usually? Uh, no. Well, I, I, okay. no. But it was based on Elton John and Freddie Mercury if they were, had a baby and then named him Freddie John. That was one of my favorite characters. <laughs> Keith Moon's a barbarian. Uh, <laughs> Keith, Moon, Keith Moon's a barbarian. Um, are you talking about the thing I DM? Yeah, that was yeah, pretty great. I wasn't DM it? for the first time, and yeah, and she was a crow who didn't talk. And when we do, if we do my one shot again, eventually I, we got to figure out something to do with her. I would throw sparkling Eldric blasts in people's faces, <laughs> and I just <laughs> and so you know you just just pick one thing, whatever it is, one thing, and then just have fun with it, and don't be a dick. <laughs> uh, just be just be everybody's friend. Try to be everybody's buddy. Um, the hardest part about keeping a campaign going is coordinating everyone's schedules. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and because we're all adults at that point, or or we're we're older and and we're busy, and and forgiving people when they say they're going to show and they don't. You know, you you have to just be willing to say. Hey, that's cool, man. I get it. You're an adult, and you got other obligations. And then play with the three people that were there, like, and just do it because they showed up and they want to have a good time. Whatever. Um, I, I I have to kind of just shrug it off. I'm too old to to dwell on like minutia. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, just uh, if we can go down the line again as to who you are and um, you know what you're doing, or I mean, like I know Steve, you. You, you are doing this like full time, pretty much. It seems like so. Where can they find you guys? <laughs> Me full time? No, um, I I don't do that full time. I wish I did. <laughs> um, I can be found on Facebook. My name is Steve Caceres. Um, the what I just worked on right now is uh, the Creeponomicon. It's also on Instagram and Facebook. We're just starting the community. This was just published Thursday. I just got this oh. Thursday. So this is his first outing at a comic book convention. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. So this is the first book of hopefully more, and it's meant to create a community amongst, of just people who enjoy role playing, but also like to uh, form community around not being a horrible person. So, yeah. And Artie. Again, I am Artie Moore and such. I'm a local coordinator for all of Los Angeles. I've been DMing uh, for countless years, 22 really. But you can always find me in stores all around uh, from Santa Monica down to about Long Beach. Also, I do technically have a nonprofit. The Directors of Mayhem, we actually go out and teach individuals, both by home uh, parties, schools and such, on how to be better players and hopefully better people too. All right, Jordan? Uh, I'm Jordan Kate Munn, and you can find me on Instagram just under my full name, Jordan Kate Munn. Um, I'm a model, and I don't post enough on social media because it's boring, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> Does so. Where, they, where can they find you in DM or in D&D? Uh, D&D? &D? Oh, I'm on Vicious Mockery. Just go to Vicious Mockery YouTube. And uh, since I, we filmed the thing that I DM for the first time because I wanted to do it before my wedding, um, I'm going to screw with the audio and edit it down and do a bunch of stuff with that. What? <laughs> what? Cool. Um, so I'm Paula CK. Um, I actually uh, frequent the comic book shop in Manhattan Beach called The Comic Bug. It's also in Culver City. Uh, I'm part of a the group called Sketchy Bug Group, which is a group of comic book creators and different artists and creators that create stuff all the time. Uh, and you can find me on Vicious Mockery. Uh, uh, Dice Against the World is a new little... Subname, moniker yeah. um, on YouTube and on Instagram, and then I have an Instagram called Art by Paula CK. You can find all my goofy art. Freak. And and me, DM Marker, everyone's best boy. Um, <laughs> and uh, best boy. You can find me on Vicious Mockery on YouTube. If you just type in Vicious Mockery, that's me. Um, if you want stickers for Vicious Mockery, I have so many of them. If you, the first person to put it on their forehead and say, Vicious Mockery, I will put you on Instagram. <laughs> um, and uh, you will find me in the next few months writing short stories and anthologies for comic books and things like that. Because I have two already written and they are in the artist's hands and 
you know, pray to the gods that they get printed. <laughs> so, are there openings for kids in uh, the comic book for Wednesdays? You can always come by on the comic book on Wednesdays, and uh, we always have uh, groups of kids anywhere from the ages of like eight to um, you know sixteen, and then onward. If you, uh, we have adult groups that meet there. Um, I help to kind of coordinate that entire thing. Um, it's pretty great. And if you just want to come on like Friday nights for Magic the Gathering or Saturdays for like board games, um, it's a total geek community. And I'm just a part of one day in yeah. one part of that community. And um, it, it's an absolute blessing. And if any of you guys live near a local comic book shop or a local game shop and you don't go there frequently, you are missing your community. Come to your church and let's hang out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much for, be for being here. And thank you guys for coming. Um, and also, I'm Tyler McPhail from the Grand Geek Gathering, where we do podcasts, other panels, and uh, more. And uh, these guys will definitely answer your questions since we didn't have that much time. And uh, again, thank you for coming. And see you next LA Comic Con. Yeah. yeah.